Good evening, everybody. It's Rod with Power Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth. We're going to get started with today's live stream momentarily. We'll give it another 30 or 60 seconds for people to jump on, and then we'll get into today's content. I see we have some people joining us. Welcome. We're going to get started with today's live stream in about 30 seconds. So just sit tight, please. Good evening, everybody. Welcome back on The Pursuit of Wealth. It's Rod with Power Group. Today is Tuesday. It's May 3rd. Hope you're well today. And in this live stream and in this video, going to look under the hood of the news that came out today uh, with regards to Hexo. So they announced a 40 million at the market program and offering. I uh, caught a lot of people off, uh, by, uh, off guard and, and caught them by surprise, myself included. Um, but going to go over my thoughts and opinions on this news, um, there is some stuff uh, with regards to how it was all worded and the timing of everything that's a little odd, uh, not going to sugarcoat it. Before we jump into it though, make sure to smash the like, it, help, uh, it helps support me and the channel, it doesn't cost you anything. And if you're new here, hit the subscribe button and make sure to tick the bell, you'll be notified on any future updates. Uh, but if you recall, I did a video a couple of weeks ago, uh, basically saying that we could potentially still see another reverse split, so we need to uh, we need to be aware that there's you know there's potential news that could come out. There could be another raise. I said, uh, granted, I didn't think it would be this soon, but it was only for 40 million USD, up to 40 million. Uh, but I think that this has to do well. They stated in the in the news article what it was for, but I think it has to do with more of the uh, the debt repayments ahead of the till uh, the Tilray deal closing. Uh, but I'll look into that here in a, I'll bring it up here in the actual article and I'll show you exactly what I mean. But diving into the article from today, uh, Hexo launches new at the market offering. And there's been a lot of speculation going on. And uh, again, this is something that I said could happen. We could see another raise, maybe even two more raises. We could see a reverse split. Uh, all things that uh, are that we have to be aware of and expect. So again, the the the, you know, the news caught a lot of people off surprise, surprise, right? And it's just when you see the article, it's you know, oh my God, they're diluting again, they're raising again. What happened to the Tilray deal and and whatnot? So again, I'll go over my thoughts and opinions. I don't think this is a huge deal, though. Uh, like I said, it's only for 40 million USD, and that would be equate to about 80 million shares. Uh, total, but I'm not going to read this whole entire article, but essentially it was uh, replacing the at the market offering of the common shares in Canada and the United States having an aggregate sale price of up to 150 million, uh, which was terminated. It was uh, conducted through BMO Nesbitt Burns and AGP Alliance Global Partners and BMO Capital Markets. And that was terminated effective April 11, 2022. And the company terminated the previous ATM offering and the previous ATM agreement with the previous ATM agents in order to proceed with this new one. So it's a different agent this time, um, which is uh, Canaccord uh, Genuity, I believe. But again, there's not really much in this that we can, you know, really... Uh, we don't know how much of that previous ATM that was raised. Uh, a lot of people are saying, why did they do? Why did they terminate the old one and go with this new one for 40 million? I think uh, mostly because it has to do with the uh, the agents are shifting. But the company intends to use the net proceeds from the ATM program for working capital and funding its operating activities. So again, I think this has to do with the debt payments. So I, I think it was about 20 million 
uh, that they needed for debt payments. So if we think about this, if the Tilray deal isn't set to close until you know one or two more months, maybe this was a stopgap. Maybe this was kind of uh, another uh, potential raise to pay off that debt, uh, which would get them through until the Tilray deal closes. So again, I think the most important thing that we, we can't lose sight of right now is how important this Tilray deal really is, right? Uh, cash is depleting and you know, convenient timing as well uh, that Tilray's coming in and we're seeing, we saw the, um, that high trail wave, the, uh, the debt. So announces high trail waves event of default under secured note. So just all these things, you know, Hexo's technically kind of catching a break, uh, even though a lot of people are seeing this and saying, oh my God, what a terrible company and another round of dilution. Uh, well, again, this is all pertaining to uh, that, that Tilray deal in my opinion, and the debt repayments that have to be, uh, that have to be met, right? Uh, so the 30 million shall be applied to cover the company's obligation under the transaction agreement entered into uh, April 11, 2022 between uh, High Trail and Tilray to pay the fees of Tilray's financial advisor or other direct or indirect costs and expenses. So again, anything in excess of 30 million is going to be paying uh, Tilray's advisors and lawyers and things like that. Uh, to co cover those costs and expenses. But again, I think um, I read they had 14 million in cash left as of April 29th. And if we take into account that 40 million, that would get them by the next couple of months in order to see that Tilray deal close, which it's set to close. And again, this is just more proof that that Tilray deal, in my opinion, is, is set to close. And it, technically, uh, if you look at at the market offerings, what they're for, what they're used for is for raising money quickly and efficiently and inexpensively. So if they needed money quickly, um, there was also a requirement that Hexo has to hold about a hundred million in cash, uh, which we'll look at here in a minute uh, in order to see that Tilray deal close. Uh, so there's a lot of moving parts going on right here, right now. Uh, I think the best thing what we can do as as retail investors is try not to let emotions get the best of us. Look at this rationally and logically and say, okay, well, what the timing of this is a little odd. Why did we see this 40 million uh, right ahead of the Tilray deal? And I think it has to do with the cash component of Hexo needing to have a hundred, a hundred million in cash, uh, but also to pay for those fees for uh, Tilray and also to pay the debt repayments uh, to get those debt payments done until we get to uh, the Tilray deal actually closing. And the Tilray deal hasn't closed yet, right? So we need to see that that's the most important thing. I think a lot of the, the articles and news that we've been seeing are pretty much just noise. The most important thing that we need to pay attention to is the Tilray deal closing. If that doesn't close, we have a big problem, right? Uh, so this is my, you know, I'm not too worried about the reverse split. Again, we need to be aware of all the negatives. I said in my previous video, we could see another raise, maybe even two, we could see the reverse split, right? There's, I said it could get worse before it gets better, but we have a plan for it, right? And granted, again, I didn't expect this this raise to come in uh, this soon, but it makes sense when you think about it. And like I said, it's only 40 million. It could be a lot worse, uh, but I'm still a little concerned. It's something that strikes me as odd is the fact that they need to have 100 million in cash at the time of the Tilray deal closing. So this is a little concerning. Uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. Uh, I'm not sure how they're planning on getting to that. Uh, maybe we see another inv outside investment. Maybe they raise cash through uh, a leaseback of uh, one of their facilities. I'm not entirely sure how they're going to do that. Let me know in the comments um, what you think they could do or what you think could potentially be coming. Could we see another uh, round of investments from an outside investor? Uh, but personally, I'm a little concerned that the fact that they're only sitting at about 50 million ahead of this Tilray deal that requires 100 million. Uh, something I wanted, I posted as well, uh, just before we dive more into this, I did post that uh, the Cold Creek Kush Readies Plus is now online, so I'm not gonna play this he used to get a copyright hip here, but essentially they're new infused pre-rolls at about 25% and uh, really looking forward to these, but apparently they launched on the OCS today. Some people said they didn't see it on the OCS, but just expect uh, that to come in the next uh, day or two. Maybe they sold out as well, but usually when they sell out, it says sold out, right? Uh, and something I want to highlight as well, going to be doing a POW Group uh, giveaway. So I'm going to be doing two gold annual memberships of the private POW Group community. Uh, they're valued at $150 each, so $300 total. I'm going to be giving that away on the 14th of May. I'll do a live stream on Saturday, May the, four, uh, the 14th. And I'll just do a random giveaway on YouTube. Um, a lot of people are saying they didn't have Facebook, didn't have Twitter accounts. So I'm just going to do it on YouTube. I'm going to do a live stream. I'm going to give away two annual memberships valued at $150 each. And I'll just pick a random comment. So as long as you comment on on the live stream that day. Um, I'll just do a random comment picker and two people will win that. So good luck to everybody in that, uh, that participates in that. So another article that came out from the deep dive 
Hexocorp announces, and this is a pretty bearish biased uh, article. Hexocorp announces US 40 million ATM financing, less than two months cash remaining. Uh, so this was pretty bearish, uh, but essentially they just go on to regurgitate a lot of what I just said. Um, this latest financing is to be conducted via Canaccord Genuity. The previous offering uh, comparatively was conducted through um, Alliance Global Port Partners and BMO, like I mentioned. Uh, proceeds will be used to fund working capital and funding its operations. So again, operations and I think to pay off that debt. Any proceeds from the financing beyond 30 million, yep, we know is to pay the financial advisor of Tilray in relation to the transaction agreement. Notably, within the related prospectus filing, which I'll bring up here in a second, made this morning, Hexo identified that its non-restricted cash position has declined from 37.7 million as of January 31st to that of 14.1 million as of April 29th. Um, so again, if we factor in those debt repayments, uh, that, that seems to line up uh, pretty well. The result is that the company currently has less than two months of cash burn remaining in company coffers and if, is a far cry from that uh, US 100 million required to be available upon closing of the transaction with Tilray. Um, so again, it's imperative that we see this deal with Tilray close and convenient timing um, as well as, like I said, cash is depleting and you know, not sugarcoating it. Definitely have, Hexo definitely has some problems. They, have, they definitely have a lot of uh, potential uh, as well for uh, becoming a top, you know, top global, top five global company. Um, but it comes with its risk, right? And high risk is high reward. Um, this is why I diversify into multiple different assets, asset classes, multiple different MJ stocks. Um, I said it a million times. I'll say it again. I own more crypto than I do MJ and I own 50% of my investment capital is in cash. Um, so again, this is how I, I, I diversify and, and cope with all these, these risks, right? Because I didn't invest more than I'm willing to lose. And there's tons of ups, upside with Hexo, but there's obviously some issues. There's issues with a lot of MJ companies at the moment in the whole sector, right? Um, we're seeing uh, Congress being very, very slow and, and Biden, you know, not to get political, but we're not seeing a whole lot of movement in the U.S. And uh, it's really taking a toll on these companies, um, especially when they've been preparing for it. Uh, so again, I'm going to bring this up here. Uh, so th this is from the previous article about the deal. So the closing of the transaction and strategic alliance are subject to regulatory approvals, as well as the condition that Hexo must have at least 100 million in cash and a committed equity line of 180 million, which we know is Chaos Capital RV. Uh, so there's where the backstop of 180 million is coming from. But again, I'm a little concerned that they need to have US uh, 100 million in cash upon closing of this deal. Um, yeah, so I'll bring up that, uh, and they did something else before I forget. They did file um, on Cedar. Let me just bring that up here real quick. I want to try and keep this video as short as possible, uh, but I do want to bring this up because it's important. And we, a lot of people were speculating that this had to do um, with uh, the reverse split. Why does Cedar never want to lo uh, load whenever I'm on live? This is odd. Every time I go on a live stream, doesn't want to load. Anyways, there was a article from there, uh, or there was a CEDAR filing that said that they're going to be doing a, a meeting and it's going to be a shareholder meeting. Um, and I think that that has to do with the Tilray vote um, because we already know they already received approval for the, uh, for the reverse split. So I don't think it'd be that. And something I wanted to mention as well from the, if we take a look here from this article, so MJ, something I just tweeted on uh, on Twitter. So we go to page, what is it, page two. Let's go back here. Let's go up. No, that's page. So this here. So this offering is being made, and this is pers the prospectus that was filed uh, that I got off uh, CDAR as well. This offering is being made by the Canadian issuer that is permitted under the multi-jurisdictional disclosure system. So MJDS adopted by the United States and Canada to prepare this pros uh, prospectus supplement in accordance with the Canadian disclosure requirements. And you might be wondering why am I pointing that out? Well, I did a, a post here and a lot of people were wondering why they did an ATM. They couldn't find somebody who was willing to, uh, to invest 40 million in Hexo. But again, like I mentioned, the at the market programs are usually when companies need to acquire capital quickly, efficiently, and inexpensively. And also I found this article on the internet, um, an at the market program may just be the right way to raise additional equity capital quickly 
and inexpensively, especially for Canadian companies that are listed on a U.S. stock exchange and eligible to use the multi-jurisdictional disclosure system. So again, they're a Canadian company and they're listed on the U.S. stock exchange and they're under that MJDS system, right? And we just confirmed that here in the prospectus. So that lines up well. That's why I think they did it at the, at the market program is because they needed to do it quickly and, uh, and inexpensively. And they, it's at the company's discretion, right? So they're in control as well. Um, but yeah, there's some things that aren't lining up. I, I didn't really see, um, I'd like to see how much they actually tapped. Um, I saw someone on Reddit said that, um, you know, this replaces the 150. So if we minus off 40, that's you're saving a dilution of 110 million. But the question is, we don't know how much they tapped of the previous at the market uh, offering. I don't think they've uh, disclosed that. If anybody does know, uh, drop me in the comments below. I'd appreciate that. But that's a question that we would like to find out, right? Um, but moving on, um, actually, there was more to that. So this offering is being made by the Canadian issuer that is permitted. So I just, yeah, I just copied that. Uh, sorry, I just copied that uh, from the uh, prospectus. So yeah, I already went over that. So moving on, um, I did mention, I did want to mention this transaction detail uh, with Tilray. So this is the original one. Hexo and Tilray brands agree to create a strategic alliance bringing together the two companies. So they mentioned the backstop of Chaos, 180 million. Actually, it wasn't in that one. Um, so they did waive the default, the wave, uh, the wave, they waive the high trail, the, the debtor, the issuer, um, the debt holder, uh, waive that. What else did I want to mention? So much stuff going on. There's a lot of moving parts. And like I said, this is, if you guys don't have a sore brain after today, um, I don't know, I, I, you must be, uh, <laughs> you must have a brain of steel because, my brain just feels like much trying to put all this together. And I think they do this intentionally just to, just to confuse everybody, right? And we got to kind of dissect it. We're almost, we almost have to be uh, investigators uh, to really uh, dissect all this information and, and understand it is another thing, right? And a lot of it's a lot of legal mumbo jumbo, but uh, something I wanted to highlight, this is where it is here. So Tilray Brands and High Trail Investments uh, the terms of the transaction are set out in a transaction agreement entered into among Hexo and Tilray and High, Ta uh, High Trail, providing the amendment to the terms of the outstanding senior secured convertible notes originally issued to Hexo by High Trail and the execution of the amended uh, restated note with HDI that will be immediately thereafter assigned to Tilray Brands pursuant to the terms of the assignment and assumption agreement together with the transaction agreement and amended note transaction. So again, once the transaction closes, um, immediately thereafter assigned to Tilray. So that tells me that Hexo still has to pay those. Somebody said that the debt was on pause, but I don't believe so. I'm pretty sure Hexo is still paying uh, those debt redemptions. They waived the default, but they didn't actually, they didn't, it's not like they paused it. Correct me if I'm wrong, but that's how I understood it. Um, and then they just go on to, to talk about the synergies. Uh, but again, we know we had that 80 million from Chaos Capital, so RV, Adam RV, and then we needed that 100 million. So again, I'm a little concerned about that 100 million part that we need to have in cash. But uh, again, I, I think that the majority of the reason for this raise was to fund operations, pay till raise uh, expenses, and also uh, pay the debt. And just taking a look at the chart here real quick. So we did hold the low here at 37 cents. I've had a lot of people thought we were going to completely crater below that today. Uh, but uh, oddly enough, we're set up for a daily trend change here. So key supports at 37 cents. If we lose that, we continue the daily downtrend with a lower high and lower low. Um, it's actually a daily bear flag as well at the moment. So we could see more downside, but the only hope right now for bulls is that we change this daily trend. So if we hold 37 cents support, that's going to be the key, cent, uh, key support going forward. If we lose that, again, daily downtrend continues. If we hold that support though, and we break resistance, the high at the, of the bounce on the daily time frame at 43 cents, that's going to confirm a daily uptrend. And Tilray actually confirmed a daily uptrend here with the low, high, higher low and higher high. We didn't get much follow through. Um, so again, we're a little bit skeptical of the bulls at the moment. We still got a lot to prove, but um, starting to see a little bit of momentum shifting here. And again, Hexo held up relatively well, all things considered today, and going to be all about that resistance at 43 cents. If we, if we break that resistance, we confirm a daily uptrend, and then we zoom out and we look for the weekly bounce to get underway, and we have a lack of resistance on the weekly up to 75 cents. And then we watch for a weekly trend change, and then we zoom out to the monthly, and then we look for a monthly trend change. So again, we could see another reverse split. We could see another raise. 
Um, you know, it, it's entirely possible. Um, I'm not exactly sure how they're going to get that hundred thousand, a hundred million in cash that they need at the close of the Tilray deal. So again, my my main focus is getting this Tilray deal closed. I I really do not care about the reverse split at the moment. Everything else is just noise. Uh, the most important thing that we need to be worrying about right now is getting that that debt closed with or that deal closed with uh, Tilray. But again, we still need to confirm daily uptrends. We're close. Uh, then we need to zoom out and confirm weekly uptrends. We're in a weekly downtrend, monthly downtrend. So we've got multiple weeks and months potentially uh, of work to do here before we can really see uh, much of an uptrend, right? We need to confirm weekly and monthly uptrends uh, before we know that the bottom is in and the bear market is over. And we're months away from doing that, right? In order to do that on the monthly, we'd have to see the monthly bounce get underway, which we're nowhere near breaking the high of last month. So the monthly bounce is nowhere near getting started. Um, so again, we need to see the monthly bounce start and then we need to form a higher low and a higher high. So it could take us multiple months. Uh, so you need to be, have realistic expectations, right? Um, this is why I hold 50% of my, my, my net worth in cash at the moment because we just don't know, right? I've got my, my long-term bags packed in MJ. I own about 12 different MJ companies, picks and shovels. Um, check out my top five MJ holding video. I have MSOs, I have LPs, I have retailers, I've got ETFs, right? And I think it's going to be a few weeks, a few months, at least before we, and you know, we saw the Schumer bill was delayed. We're seeing hold up in Congress and in, you know, in, in the president and we just haven't seen any follow through. Right. So, and again, I think that has to do with the fact that uh, a lot of things in crypto got delayed and I don't think they want to run MJ and start the bull market in MJ until the bull market is over in crypto and the, and the tech stocks. Right. And that's all lining up that we could potentially see a, a reversal at some point into the fall. And uh, so, so many people were like, Oh, this is what you said two months ago, well, things change, right? We didn't know that the Schumer bill was going to get delayed and we didn't know that all these crypto things were going to get delayed and then push out. That's what I think anyway. Again, I could be wrong. I don't have a crystal ball, but that's just, you know, what my gut is telling me. And uh, just from my experience in the market, um, it really does look like they want to run MJ after uh, after the, the tech stocks and crypto. And we know that uh, crypto has been very correlated to the equities market and the, you know, tech stocks and things like that. So I really think we need to see... Um, that those those uh, industries uh, and those asset classes uh, top out first, um, and yeah, we a lot of people are asking. Well, can Hexo go lower from here? Absolutely, it can, right? What if Spy corrects and goes into a nasty bear market for the next year or two, right? Um, these are all things that we we just don't know. So that's why I recommend having um, you know multiple, having diversification, having some cash on the side. Uh, but again, I, I'm prepared for both scenarios, right? Uh, but that's pretty much. What I'm looking at, uh, we're still bullish on the MACD on, on Hexo uh, on the weekly time frame. We did have a bear cross here, so pretty bearish uh, negative signal here on the stochastic. Uh, we're still below the 10-week moving average. Um, but at the moment, we are starting to see these moving averages get closer. So we're lining up where we could potentially see a golden cross of, these, uh, of the 50-day moving average through the 200-day. But again, it's likely weeks and months out. Look how far away we are. Uh, in terms, you know, we've got the, the 50 day there at 55 cents and the 200 up at 143. So for an order uh, for a golden cross to occur, the 50 has to rise up through the 200. So we're looking at, uh, you know, multiple weeks and potentially months before that happens. And again, that lines up with the thinking that Hexo still needs to confirm weekly and monthly uptrends. And that's going to take months to do it. Right. So, again, we can always go lower. Um, but at the moment, I don't think there's any major worries. The thing that we need to be concerned about is the Tilray deal closing. And all signs are pointing to that deal closing uh, with this being used to pay for the proceeds of uh, the operations, which again is likely going to get them by until the deal closes. Uh, oh yeah, that's something else I wanted to mention in here. So April 29th, this is in the prospectus where they mentioned the working capital. The company's existing cash and working capital do not provide sufficient liquidity to meet the necessary cash outflow requirements for the, at least the next 12 months. As of January 31st, 2022, the company had approximately uh, approximately 37.7 million in non-restricted cash and working capital deficiency of approximately 15.5 million. As at April 29th, 2022, the company had non-restricted cash balance of approximately 14.1 million. In the event of the note transaction is completed, the company will gain access to approximately 80 million, which will currently, uh, this is from the Tilray deal, which is currently restricted cash under the terms of the note and the company will also have access to the standby commitment on completion of the note transaction. So again, they'll have access to the 180 million backstop of Chaos Capital uh, and also 80 million. So if you're wondering, if you're getting, you know, 
goosebumps saying, oh my God, Exxon only has 14.1 million in uh, non-restricted cash balance. Um, well, again, as soon as this Tilray deal closes, they'll get access to 80 million. And then also, um, like I said, they'll have access to that standby commitment. Moreover, the, the completion of the note transaction will provide Hexo with immediate operational flexibility as the modified terms of the amended note will be more favorable to it than the terms of the existing note. So they're talking about the new deal with, with Tilray. This includes eliminating the note's monthly optional redemption feature, which is currently really, that's why I think they did this 40 million ATM was because they needed to do it quickly and, and efficiently and inexpensively. And they needed to, uh, to fund that uh, next couple of months until they get that Tilray deal. And then once the Tilray deal is signed, then they'll have access to that 80 million. That's how I understand it. Again, correct me if I'm wrong, but it's, uh, again, there's a lot of moving parts going on here. Um, but that's, I, I, you know, I went and, Went in the sauna afterwards and uh, was out with a uh, PAL group member, actually had uh, lunch. So that was fantastic. Um, shout out to PAL Flex for coming out for that. Um, but I uh, had a pretty busy day and there was, you know, millions of people, uh, millions of messages to read, it seemed. Um, but uh, I went and went in the sauna and just racked my brain over this and kind of tried to get some quiet time. And this is what I come up with. This is the most likely uh, conclusion that I can come up with of why they did this 40 million was to get them by, pay those debt redemptions and then get them by to when the deal closes. And then once the deal closes with Tilray in the next month or two, uh, then they'll have 80 million plus the backstop of 180 million. Uh, and then they will be smooth sailing, right? And then in the next four or five quarters in the next year or so, they should have positive cash flow from op operations. So I think that was all I wanted to mention. Again, a lot of uh, a lot of moving parts here. I'm um, gonna try to keep this video as short as possible. I see we have some people in the chat, so we'll go over some of this uh, here now. Um, but yeah, really looking forward to trying these new Redis Plus. Uh, they're infused with distillate. Um, if anybody tries these, let me know. It's, it's Ontario that's getting all the new releases and new products uh, before Alberta. It used to be Alberta, and now it's Ontario. I'm a little, a little jealous, but I uh, might have to make a trip out to Ontario just uh, to get some of these new products. And it, it makes sense though, right? Because Ontario is huge, huge market and obviously gonna be better for the business. Uh, but uh, yeah, gonna take a look at some of the chat here. I've been uh, trying to avoid looking at it just to keep my train of thought. Cause like I said, there is a lot of, there is a lot of stuff going on uh, at the moment. But uh, again, just a reminder here as well, we have that free giveaway that'll be going on on May 14th and I'm going to be doing it. I was gonna do it on Facebook, uh, but I decided I'm just gonna do a live stream and give it away. Um, so. Look forward to that as well. Daniel Temple, hey man. Hi Rod, hope you're doing good today. I'm doing well, thank you very much. Hope you're doing well also. Cheers, Sycamore style, you bet. Cheers right back. <laughs> Molo cheers. Mirza, how you doing? What's your price target for Hexo, Rod? Uh, well, at the moment, you know, uh, I'm, not, I'm not looking at selling anytime soon. Um, personally, I think if you know, I, I don't know if you mean long-term, short-term. Um, I think it's going to be in the next few months. We could see once the Tilray deal closes. Uh, we know that I did a video on their uh, on their partner. So they said they're going to be releasing a uh, new partnership in coming weeks, and it's going to be Molson Coors Caliber. Um, and again, just the timing of all this too, right? Um, seems like they're really trying to, to flush out the, the weak hands before we really see a massive move up. Um, I think safe banking has a really good chance of passing. Actually, that's thanks for bringing that up. Uh, actually, that reminds me to go into the Power Group community here. Um, so shout out to Monique as well for posting this one, but uh, Zuanik of Cantor Fitzgerald is being uh, is more optimistic, noting that he believes the so-called Safe Banking Act has increasing support and good social policy because of its goal to eliminate the safety risks with the industry because they handle mostly cash, right? So it's dangerous for, for companies to have that in their, their cash reserves and um, subject to robberies and things like that, right? So Zuanik puts the likelihood of the passage of, of MJ banking reform this year at more than 50%. And there's been a lot of support for that. Um, and yeah, so we're going to keep an eye out for that. I think there's a good chance that it could come in, uh, in the manufacturing bill. But again, that's something that uh, would ignite the whole market. So we know that we need to see the whole market reverse, right? We need to see weekly and monthly uptrends in the whole market. And we're like, what's going to take us there, right? Uh, the stock market's at all-time highs. We've had, you know, good earnings from some uh, MSOs. And it, we're just been downtrending for the last 15 months, right? It's been a brutal bear market. Um, but I think... In order to see the whole market reverse, we need to have a, a sector-wide catalyst. 
And again, the bankers need to get positioned before they legalize. So I think SAFE is going to pass first. That's going to be the, the catalyst that ignites the whole sector. That's probably going to help us confirm weekly and monthly uptrends. And then at some point in the next year or two, we see federal legalization because you got to think the, the banks and the financial institutions, they got to get positions first, right? I don't think they're going to legalize it before the banks and, uh, and all the financial, uh, you know, Wall Street institutions get positions. It, it just wouldn't make any sense to me. But um, again, I'm not, I don't know everything, but that's just what makes the most sense to me. So if we see safe banking potentially uh, over the next few months into the fall, and then we have the elections into the fall, um, I could easily see XO back at a dollar, $2 uh, by the fall. And then, uh, you know, at some point in 2023, I could see it back anywhere from 5 to $10. And again, it's really going to depend on uh, the market environment, right? We need to see weekly and monthly uptrends in the sector. And that, that's been what I've been saying for, for many, many months right now, right? And we could still see another reverse split. We, you know, there's not the, the, the bad news isn't, isn't over yet. We could still see another reverse split. They could raise again. We don't know yet. Um, but again, once the Tilray deal goes through, they'll have about 80 million in, in working capital. And then they'll also have the backstop from, from chaos. But uh, yeah, I could see $2, one to $2 on the horizon into the fall. And then, um, uh, you know, anywhere from five to $10 at some point in 2023. Kisan, how you doing? It's going down every day. So stress has been, so stress, it's been one year. I'm so stressed. It's been one year. I am losing my patient, 85% loss. Yeah, well, you're, you're not the only one. And, uh, you know, I definitely empathize for you. Uh, but again, if you join another investment group, it's the same thing with every single Ticker, right? Granted, Hexo has struggled a lot more um, than than a lot of other. But they, like I said, there's a lot of good good things about Hexo. We have lots of new products coming out, exciting. They're probably the most exciting uh, MJ company. We have 13 new drinks from Trust coming. We have uh, the new partner CPG partnership going to be released in the in the coming weeks. And uh, like I said, Tilray. If we look back to uh, the highs here, whoops, I thought I was on the monthly chart. If we look back to the highs on uh, February of 2021 on Tilray, we were at $67. So on Tilray, we dropped from 67. In the same period, we dropped over 92%, right? So it's not just Hexo. Again, if it was if, if Tilray were up here right now at like $60, $30, or even if we were at like $20, I'd say we have a big problem with Hexo, right? But the whole market is down, right? The whole sector is down. And then if we take a look at M MSOS, look at that. We lost $15 today. I just noticed like just getting absolutely wrecked, right? And MSOS tracks all the U.S. companies, and everybody says the U.S. companies are where it's at, and LPs are garbage, right? But they got a big old piece of humble pie the last 15 months when they were, uh, you know, bragging about how good they were compared to LPs, and then just whoop, we lost. Uh, like I said, from MSOS hitting the high there at $56, we're down 73% on an ETF. That is, like, that's unheard of, right? Again, you're playing in a high risk, high reward sector, um, and it sounds like you might have went a little heavy. Um, so I would just encourage you maybe next time don't invest any more than you're willing to lose, save some cash. I also did another video, um, on a hedge game plan. Are you prepared for a massive stock market crash in my strategies? What I'm doing. Um, I also did a portfolio, um, my current portfolio breakdown. So I hold 50% of my net worth in cash. Uh, next is real estate at 25%, then crypto. Then the next is MJ and then mutual funds. And then I go over a hedging plan. And again, what can you learn from this, right? That you can uh, be prepared for the next time, right? Because we're gonna enter another MJ bear market, right? It's, it's gonna happen. Um, and, and, you know, this is all a learning experience. And mo the fact is, is most people quit uh, before they actually learn and, and, uh, and are better equipped for the next time it happens, right? Because it's gonna happen again. This isn't the first time MJ dropped, uh, you know, a significant amount and it won't be the last. And it's happened in, you know, multiple, multiple other stocks, right? Even Amazon dropped 95% uh, back in 2000 uh, when it was just a book selling store, right? Um, and then we know the history of that, right? And there's no way they would ever tank Amazon 95% today because it's valued at $1.5 trillion, right? They're just not going to be able to do that. It's because the market cap gets so high. And the same thing with MJ stocks. They're able to manipulate it because the market cap is so low, right? Like Hexo is only valued at like $200 million right now. Uh, but we know that they make more in sales annually than their, their current market cap. So that's, again, there's absolutely risks. There's absolutely lots of rewards. There's tons of positives. There's, there's a lot of negatives as well. But all companies have that uh, initially starting out, right? Mirza, is there any news about Hexo and CPG partnership? Uh, no, I did a video, like I said, on that. It should be coming out in the coming weeks. But uh, it's Molson Coors Caliber is what they say. I think it's Kellogg's. 
Bro, you think we're gonna lose all money? Kisan, how you doing? No, I don't think I'm gonna lose all my money. Um, and MJ, I don't think you're gonna lose your money either. Um, but you know, I can't guarantee this isn't financial advice. It's for entertainment purposes only and just giving you my thoughts and opinions. But uh, again, to me, it looks like all signs are pointing to the Tilray deal closing. It even says in here that it was used, um, is going to be used to pay off the proceeds. Uh, they're gonna be used anything in excess of 30 million to pay the transaction costs for Tilray um, and legal fees, all that stuff. So again, it's just this is just more signs that are pointing to the deals actually progressing and we could see it close soon. So um, this is what I wanted to see. I want to see the Tilray deal close. I don't, I don't care about the reverse split. I don't care about the 40 million they raise. That's gonna get them through until the deal closes. They'll pay the debt, fund their operations. And then as soon as the deal closes, they get 80 million from, from Tilray and the backstop of 180 million from Chaos Capital. So if Tilray deal falls through, then ugh, that's not looking good, right? Like, but as of right now, all signs are pointing to the Tilray deal closing. So I don't think we're gonna lose all our money, but again, uh, make sure to check out how to uh, prepare, right? Uh, my portfolio breakdown, learn how I deal with these low, low prices and massive sell-offs in the crypto and, and massive bear market um, in MJ, and then also look at my hedging game plan. And that's how I prepare for the risks. Vincent, how you doing? Welcome. Do you think MSOS can bounce? It's RSI in the 20. Yeah, it's getting crushed. Um, I, I, I don't want to dive in too much into this because I, I have another appointment that I got to run to here in uh, about 10 minutes. But yeah, it, uh, anything under $15, like I said to uh, Power Group community members, uh, pretty much a no brainer investment into this one if you're you know going to hold for the next several years or until US legalization but i would start what i said was I, i'd start dollar cost averaging around $15 uh, maybe another one um, around 12.50 and another around 10 um, or if you want to be a little bit more aggressive, you could just start to average in dollar cost average every dollar, right? Um, but I would, let's say you're going to invest, you wanted to invest $10,000 in MSOS. What I would probably do if I were you, um, I already own some, but I've been dollar cost averaging. Um, but what I would probably do is I'd probably probably put 5,000 in now and then look to uh, $2,500 around uh, $1,250 and then another $2,500 around $10. If it hits, it hits. If it doesn't, you got money and skin in the game. Uh, but I think this could easily, easily 10 to 20x over the next uh, few years into US legalization. So if you put $1,000 into it, it could be worth 10, uh, 10 to $20,000. Again, not financial advice uh, over the next couple of years into US legalization. So, and this is an ETF, fairly low risk, um, and it's on a US major exchange. But yeah, yeah I'm, I'm expecting a bounce soon, right? Like take a look at the weekly, we're weekly oversold and we are daily oversold. Getting extreme, like you said, in the 20s. And we started the bounce, but it was just a fake out, another bounce fake out. So again, yeah, it's, it's like catching a falling knife. Um, but again, the old saying goes, uh, Warren Buffett, he says, buy when there's blood in the streets, even if the blood is your own. And that's what I'm doing. I'm not overcomplicating it. I'm just adding to my position. I save tons of cash and uh, I'm just gonna keep adding to those long-term MJ positions. And I didn't invest any more than I'm willing to lose. And again, again I have multiple other investments, right? So um, these are all things that, uh, that can help, but I think MSOS definitely do for a bounce soon. And like I said, I think safe, uh, really gaining traction, safe, uh, the SAFE Act and uplisting to uh, major exchanges and then able to, uh, you know, have people use credit cards and things like that for purchases is, is going to be huge. And it only makes sense that we see SAFE banking before U.S. legalization, right? Because then it, it positions all the banks and the financial institutions. Why are they going to legalize US, in the U.S. if the financial institutions and Wall Street isn't positioned? That, that, that has never happened ever, right? They always have to have their hand in it. But uh, yeah, great question. But uh, MSOS, so again, if you're down on Hexo, you're down whatever MJ stock you're in, just take a look at MSOS, right? Um, new all-time low today as well and crushed. Excited for the CPG partner recently mentioned by Vincent. Yeah, you bet, Rossum. I am as well. I think it's Kellogg's, uh, but could even see multiple CPG partners. Tilray said they were in discussions with multiple leading CPG players. Keyword players. So that would be something that would caught, uh, catch people off by surprise and off guard. Um, I think a reverse split is priced in at the moment. What I don't think is priced in at the moment is a potential for two CPG partners. Uh, that could be something that we see. Also, we could see uh, Redis enter into uh, and gel caps enter into the California market. Uh, and we could see uh, white labeling deals with MSOs that we know that they were working on as well. So there's a lot of things. 13 new drinks with trust. Like, there's so much stuff going on. The Redis Plus that just launched, uh, the new edibles from Redican. Just doesn't have the, I just don't see a failing company. If anything, I see massive manipulation 
Um, and out of all this that Hexo is going through, look at how many views that the that are and and how many retail investors are interested in it. Right? It's like they must be doing something right. <laughs> right? Of all, it, it just reminds me of that. Uh, you know, of XRP, like they all, everybody hates on that crypto. And I don't mean to bring up crypto in the MJ video, but it's so true. Like, um, you know, it, it's got an, a lawsuit against the SEC and it's still in like the top five, basically in the top five. And it has been in the top 10 for its entire existence. And after all this negativity and publicity and the, the you know, everybody pumping all these other MJ stocks and these other cryptos, somehow Hexo and, and XRP are still number one, right? And they must be doing something right, um, you know? And look at all the people trying to gain access to, you know, Arvive and Redican. And Redican was offered 1.4 billion from another competing LP and went with Hexo for 925 million. So um, it's clear that people think Hexo is going to be a real winner, uh, but they're they're sure they're sure uh, not making it easy on retail, and they're definitely pumping the FUD train, right? The fear, uncertainty, and doubt. But this isn't the first time that's happened, and it won't be the last, right? But again, Hexo is still number one, and Tilray's excited about. Hexo's opportunity. Um, Tilray said they're working with me leading CPG players, plural. Um, I, I just see a lot of upside. Again, I'm not sugarcoating it. There's some risks. I'm a little concerned about how they're going to get to that 100 million uh, in cash uh, before the Tilray deal closes. But again, this 40 million uh, that they raise at the market offering is just to get them by, right? Until the Tilray deal closes, then they'll get access to 80 million and all that. But yeah. Definitely looking forward to a string of some good news instead of this, uh, this negativity. Juan, thank you for all your videos. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. I appreciate it. Rossum, yep. Thanks for the quality videos. Thank you. Thank you for, for supporting. I, I just can't believe there hasn't been one troll yet in this, in this chat either. <laughs> so, I also did a video on, uh, pretty funny. You can check it out. What is worse than a Bitcoin maxi troll has to do with MJ as well. <laughs> But it's your comical, uh, your stereotypical, comical, nonsensical uh, internet troll is what's worth, <laughs> worse than a Bitcoin maxi troll. Shane, what's the money for purchasing other companies? Uh, no, 40 million isn't barely anything anyway. Uh, like I said, I think it's to cover the debt obligations and their operations to get them through until the Tilray deal closes, which is the next one to two months. So we know they only have about 14 million in working capital. So that means that uh, they're working on uh, just getting by for the next couple months. If they've got 14 million plus the 40 million, uh, that gives them that 20 million a month to pay the debt and then their operations. And uh, by then the Tilray deal should close and then they'll get access to that 80 million, which will uh, provide the, and then they'll have better terms under that new agreement, right? It's just, they're still stuck under the old one, uh, the old note holder, right? Enter an MJ bear market. We've been in... Enter an MJ bear market we've been in on for 14 months. Skibby, how you doing? I'm not sure what you mean. Enter an MJ bear market we've been in one for 14 months. Uh, no, I, I said that. I said we're waiting for MJ to enter a bull market. Oh, maybe I said bear market instead of bull market. Yeah, sorry. No, I, I said, no, you're definitely right. We've been in a bear market for, uh, I think it's like over 15 months now. Uh, but I must have meant bull market. We're looking for MJ to confirm a bull market, right? We need weekly and monthly uptrends for that to happen. Skibby one. Okay, yeah. Matt, Hexo robbing us blind. Uh, well, pretty much all MJ is <laughs> for the moment. Um, but if you didn't sell, then uh, you didn't lose anything. But yeah, it's definitely tough times, Matt. Uh, but again, I think this is, uh, you know, what we're, we're going to see, um, you know, we're going to be rewarded, uh, not just in Hexo, but all MJ stocks. It's been a rough 15 months, 16 months, um, not just in Hexo, but across the whole sector. So I definitely feel you there, brother. Kisan, thanks, Rod Murray. I always believe in Hexo since 2021, and I'm going to believe it will be back to $10 in one to two years. I think so. Uh, I think this company could see a $50 billion market cap over the next 10 to 20 years. Um, easily 50, 50 billion. I think CGC was almost at like 20 billion there at one point. And uh, yeah, I think it's easily for, possible for Hexo to get back to a 50 billion market cap. But again, we'll start with the till radio closing. We'll take it one step at a time. Um, but yeah, I think the Hexo has all the makings of a top five global MJ player, right? And doesn't come with the, you don't have massive risk uh, or massive reward without massive risk. And there's definitely high risk and high reward in the MJ space. You're picking the second most volatile sector in the planet, first being crypto. Skibby, Buffett, the stock market is a vehicle, yeah, a mechanism for transferring money from the impatient to the patient, you, you bet. 
and they've got all these, you know, they get the accredited investor, and you get all these different rules, and they make everything as complicated as they possibly can, and they get media spreading FUD and FOMO articles to make you buy when you should be selling and make you sell when you should be buying, <laughs> you know? It's just the, the odds are stacked against the retail investor, that's for sure. Jam Losi, welcome, thanks, just hopping in. Thanks for your info, man, very helpful all the time. Thank you, you're welcome. I appreciate you watching and glad you find value. It really, uh, really makes it all worthwhile. Okay, got it, thank you for that, you're welcome. I hope they finally legalize it in August on the federal level. That will give all MJ a big boost, yeah, I think. Uh, I think we're gonna see, uh, before we see that happen, I think we're gonna see safe banking. Uh, there's some real um, possibility that 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 could get approved here. And I think that's gonna happen first so that the banks and the financial institutions, Wall Street can position themselves before US federal legalization. So I think we're gonna see safe first. And then uh, yeah, into the fall, potentially into 2023, we see news of US legalization, right? So I think that's what uh, we could be seeing from, from here on out. Here on out. All right, going to end it there. Thanks so much, everybody. Uh, it's been a slice as always. If you could support me by smashing the like, it doesn't cost you anything. Help support me in the channel. And uh, if you could subscribe, if you're new here, tick the bell, you'll be notified on any future updates. Like I mentioned, gonna be doing a giveaway on May 14th. I'll do a live stream and I'll just select two random comments on that live stream and I'll do that publicly so everybody can see it. And then uh, we'll pick the winner. And then, uh, yeah, you'll have a annual one year free membership to the Power Group private community. So good luck and stay tuned for that. Uh, going to end it there though. And again, guys, I, I know it's been a rough couple of years. It looks like there's some light at the end of the tunnel, um, but it can always go lower and we're just waiting for the Tilray deal clo to close, right? And we could st still see reverse split. We could still see another raise before we hit cash flow positive. It's entirely possible. But again, once we get this, de this deal with Tilray out of the way, we'll have 80 million in capital uh, that we can work with. And then we'll have that 180 backstop as well. Thanks so much again, everybody, for joining us on the Pursuit of Wealth, and we'll see you again in the next video.